ready? We good? All right, Shabbat Shalom. That was horrible as always. Come on, every time. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, that's more like it. All right. All right, the parasha for this week, taken from the book of Numbers, uh, chapter 4 through chapter 7, begins with the continuation of the numbering of the families of the Levites and what portion of the tabernacle they are responsible for. The last two families being numbered of the Levites were Gershon and Merari, were charged by God through Moses to tend the curtains and the coverings of the tabernacle, the utensils and ropes that hold them together, together with the planks, bars, pillars, and sockets that hold up the curtains that completed the walls. With the census now being complete, the numbers, a number of the Levites able to work the service of the tabernacle was 8,580 people. After this, the Lord emphasizes to Moses and the children of Israel the importance of being holy and separate from those things that defile. Instructs Moses on how to determine whether a woman being suspected by her husband to have committed adultery is guilty or not by bringing her before the Lord. In giving her bitter waters that can cause a curse, it will, be determined, it will determine whether she is innocent or guilty of the sin charged against her. Chapter 6 and 7 records how the Lord is speaking to Moses, instructing the children of Israel on how to perform a Nazarite vow until it is completed, and also guides Aaron and his sons on how to bless the people of Israel by saying, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up his countenance, countenance upon you and give you peace. The parsha ends with the princes of each tribe of Israel bringing an offering to the Lord for the tabernacle, offerings of shekels of rams, goats, lambs, and bullocks for meat offerings, burnt offerings, sin offerings, and peace offerings. The reading for the Haftor portion is taken from Mishpatim, or Judges, chapter 13. It records for us a time when the children of Israel have done what is evil in the Lord's eyes, and, and he has delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. The Lord sends one of his angels to the wife of Manoah, the son of Zorah, of the tribe of Dan, and reveals to her that she will give birth to a son who will begin to save Israel from the Philistines. An angel continues to say that the son will be a Nazarite from the womb, and that she is not to drink any wine or eat anything that is defiled. She then tells Manoah, her husband, what has happened. And Manoah prays to the, Lord, to the Lord and sends his angel again that they will know if this thing is true and, and know how to raise up the child. The Lord listens to Manoah and sends an angel to him and his wife to repeat the instruction given before. Manoah then wants to prepare for the angel a kid of goats, but the angel tells him to give the kid of goats as an, ele as an elevation offering to God instead. And as he burns the offering in the flame, the angel of God goes up in the flame of the altar, and they never see him again after some time. Manoah and his wife give birth to a son whose name is Samson. The reading from the Berch HaDashah is taken from John chapter 8, verses 2 through 12. After traveling to the Mount of Olives, Yeshua comes again to the temple in the morning and begins to teach the people. And as he is teaching, the scribes and Pharisees, who are intending to test Yeshua, bring a woman who committed adultery to him. The scribes and Pharisees ask Yeshua what he thinks should be done to the woman and repeats his own instructions to him by quoting Leviticus 20.10 that she should be stoned. Yeshua, as though he never heard them, starts writing on the ground and says to them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. Once the scribes and Pharisees hear this, they begin to leave Yeshua's presence, starting with the eldest among them to the youngest. And he gets up and asks the woman where her accus accusers are, because none of them had stayed to condemn her. Yeshua then says to her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. The final reading this week is from Tehillim 67 and reads, God is merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us, Selah, that thy way may be known on the earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing, sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth, Selah. Let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise you. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Amen. All right, Shofarim.
holy, holy, holy are you, our Abba Father. Father, we come humbly before you, seeking your face, asking your forgiveness for our many, many sins. Thanking you, Lord, that you have chosen each one of us and called us to be your people. Lord, we lay aside all of our worries and all of our fears, all of our anxieties, Lord. We lay them at your feet because you have work for us to do. And Lord, we just ask that you give your courage and your strength to your people, that we can be the ones who share you with a hurting and dying world. Teach us, Lord, how to love, how to have mercy, how to have grace. All of these things, Lord, are you. They're attributes of who you are and you freely give to those who ask. Lord, we just thank you for this Shabbat that you give us to rest, to learn of you, to seek you, to worship you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you have given us this time and place. You meet our every need. And Abba, we give ourselves fully and totally to you today in Yeshua's precious name. Amen. Amen, amen. Let us stand together. For how lovely are the tents of Jacob in the dwelling places of Israel. Matovi. Shaft in my imbesses some, me mane, I and she were. Shaft in my imbesses some, me mane, I and she were. My, 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 oh, my imbesses so, my, 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 oh, my imbesses some. Hey, hey, my, 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 my imbesses some, my. My and my and my and my and best of some shaft in my and best of some me my nea yes you were shaft in my and best of some me my nea yes you were my and my and my and my and oh my and best of some my and my and my and my and oh my and best of some hey hey oh my and my and my and my and my and my and best of some my and my and my and my and my and best of Therefore, with joy, we shall draw water from the wells of Yeshua. Amen. You may be seated. All right, we begin the Siddur with Baruch Hu. Baruch Hu Adonai Hamvarach, Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Ba'ed. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One for all eternity. The children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat, observing it throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Shabbat to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. Bless you, Mashiach Yeshua, together. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. 
asher natan lanu ederach hayeshua b'mashiach yeshua. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation, Messiah Yeshua. Amen. May I'll stand for the Shema. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Vahafta et Adonai Lohecha, Vokol Lavavku, Vokol Nashaka, Vokol Medaka, Vahayu Hadrim Ele, Asher Anukim at Zavkayom, Al Lavaka, Vashina Tam Levaneka with the Bartabam, Vashivka Bevetaka, Uvletka Vaderak, Ushapka Ukumaka, Ukshatam Lioda Al Yadeka, Vahilat for Ben and Neka, Al and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write upon the doorposts of your house and on your gates, Vahavta liriacha kamoka, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God and God of our fathers, God of Avraham, God of Yitzchak, and God of Yaakov, the great, mighty, and awesome God, the most high God who bestows grace and creates all and remembers the kindnesses of the fathers, and brings a redeemer to the children's children for his name's sake with love. O King, helper, savior, and shield, blessed are you, O Lord, shield of Abraham. You are eternally mighty, my Lord, the resurrect of the dead are you, abundantly able to save, who sustains the living with kindness, resurrects the dead with abundant mercy, supports the fallen, heals the sick, releases the, the confined, and maintains his faith to those asleep in the dust. Who is like you, O master of mighty deeds, and who is comparable to you, O king, who causes death and restores life and makes salvation sprout? Our God and God of our fathers, may you be pleased with our rest, Sanctify us in your commandments and grant us our portion in your Torah. Satisfy us from your goodness and make us rejoice in your salvation. And purify our hearts to serve you in truth. In love and favor, O Lord our God, grant us your holy Shabbat as a heritage. May Israel, who sanctifies your name, rest therein. Baruch atah Adonai, mekadesh ha-Shabbat. Blessed are you, O Lord, who makes the Shabbat holy. Magnified and sanctified be his great name in the world which he has created according to his will. May he establish his kingdom during your life and during your days and during your life for the whole house of Israel even swiftly and soon. And all say, 
Let his great name be blessed forever and to all eternity. Blessed, praised, and glorified, exalted, extolled, and honored, magnified, and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed is he, though he be high above all blessings and songs, praises and consolations which are uttered in the world, and all say, Amen. May you make peace in its high places, make peace upon us and upon all Israel, and say, Amen. Yitzgadal vitzgadash merabah. Bamadi Virchio, Yamnik Makote, Bakai Kon of Yomokon of Kai de Kol, Bates Israel, Bagla of Wisman Kri Vimru Yesh Meraba, Mavarak, Lel Lam, or May, or Maya Yit Barak, Vishtapak, Vitapa Avim, a mom, Vietna Save at the Dorv, at the Lev to Lal Shmirkur Shabri Hum, the Almin Korbakata, Vishrata Tushpakata, the Nekamata Damaram, Bama, Vimru. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Oh, say shalom im Rama, who we are, say shalom aleinu, ve yacho Yisrael, vimru, imru, amen, oh, say Shalom bim ramam, who we are, say shalom aleinu, ve'acho Yisrael, vimru, imru, amen. Yaseh shalom, yaseh shalom. on high places, make peace for Israel and for all mankind, and say, Amen. Where I find, where I find my home, 
Heavenly Father, we worship you, we honor you, O God, King upon a throne. You sit high above the clouds, Lord God. You look down upon the earth you created. You see your people. You make paths straight. You make a way through the narrow gate. You are full of glory and honor. Water in the desert. Praise upon our lips, Lord God. We honor you, Lord. We are worms and dust, but you, O God, are everything. We glorify your name. There's none like you. We raise you up today, Lord, as a banner, as an ensign to the world around us to see. The Lord of Israel, the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords. That is you, Yeshua. We magnify your name, Yeshua. We praise you for what you're doing, what you've done, and what you're about to do. Hashem Yeshua Mashiach. Amen. Ben Shoah Aaron, when the ark would travel, Moshe would say, Arise, Lord, let your enemies be scattered. Let them that hate you flee from you, for out of Zion shall go forth the Torah and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Blessed be he when his holiness gave the Torah to his people, Yisrael. Ya Amod Yoel ben Abraham la Torah. Baruchuet Adonai Hambarach, Baruch Adonai Hambarach Leolam Vael. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher b'chor b'nu mikol, ha'amim v'natan lanu et torato, baruch atah Adonai, notain ha'torah. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One, for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all people, and gave us this Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Yeladim.
Baruch et Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, asher netan lanu et Torah emet, v'chai olam nata, betochenu, Baruch et Adonai noten. HaTorah, blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth, has planted eternal life within us. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Bazod HaTorah, Shir Sam Moshe, Lifnei B'nei Yisrael, Al Piat Adonai B'yad Moshe. And this is the Torah that Moses placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord through Moses' hand. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. This Torah scroll is the Word of God, Yeshua, is this word. John the Immerser said in John 1.29, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. God's word is written on lambskin. Yeshua is this lamb. In John 12.32, Yeshua said, And I, if I'm lifted from the earth, I'll draw all people to myself. The two wooden poles holding this Torah scroll are called Eitz Chaim, or Tree of Life. Yeshua was sacrificed on two wooden poles some 2,000 years ago for our sins. Amen. It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it. Happy are those who support it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Cause us to return to you, Adonai, and we shall return, renew our days as of old. Revelation 2.7 reads, You as an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the congregations, to him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Yeshua was, is, and shall ever be this word of the one living God that we look upon this day for our salvation. Amen. You may be seated. So Rabbi Rebetzin, the Humphrey family, is uh, out today. They are celebrating a modim, a very important uh, passage of time for Jesse Martin, who's graduating from high school, surprisingly. Um, so you will not see any of the, the family here, but um, Brian is going to take the helm here and lead us into the word. I mean, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Good to see everyone. Hopefully everyone's enjoying uh, or had a good week, had a nice, peaceful, uh, blessed week. Uh, and hopefully, uh, as the sun uh, is coming out and the, the weather is getting much better, hopefully you've been enjoying your summers. Uh, so far, I know uh, some schools are not on summer break yet. Uh, Copley is. So we've been uh, out going to pools and, and doing a variety of things. So hopefully you guys are doing the same thing. Today, uh, we are going to cover something that uh, I've done in the past uh, so related to uh, these verses, and it's something that we say every day, uh, or some of us might say it every day, uh, as well as say every Shabbat, and that is the uh, priestly blessing, the Berchat Kohanim, uh, the uh, Ronic Benediction, uh, known by all uh, each of those titles. We're going to go through uh, each of the verses of the Aaronic Benediction. We're going to discuss uh, the meanings of the words. I feel like it's very important. I know, again, I know we, we know this blessing because, well, hopefully we should because we say it a, lot, a, a ton of times. But I believe it's always important to take a step back with those things that we, uh, that, are, um, every day, that are every day in our lives, that, that occur a, a lot uh, to make sure we're understanding what those mean and understanding the importance, the impact, uh, the influence it should have on our lives each and every day. When we hear this blessing or when we say this blessing or we read it, um, hopefully we are doing that all throughout our weeks because it is something that I think provides us a reminder not only uh, of who our God is uh, and what he, uh, what he does for us, but also what type of banner we're carrying on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I think sometimes, obviously, uh, we potentially can get lost in the world, lost uh, with what's going on in our lives, lost with what's going on in the world, um, and all the noise, and lose sight of um, who's leading us, right? Lose sight of uh, who we are uh, in God. 
And then also, uh, I think sometimes in losing sight of that, depending on the situations we're going through, depending on what's going on in our lives, uh, we begin to take matters in our own hands. We begin to strategize, uh, plan, whatever it might be, uh, on how to go about things on how we see fit as opposed to, but wait a second, you know, we have God above us, right? We have God, in, like I prayed uh, over the kids, we have God in front of us and behind us and the sides of us. You know, he is the one that's the master director. He is the one uh, that's guiding everything. You know, nothing, as we always say here, nothing that occurs is just by happenstance, right? God is directing these things for a purpose in our individual lives as well as in our collective lives. Uh, and I think as we go through these verses, as we specifically as we go through the Aaronic benediction, I think it becomes so clear, especially the words being used and the definition of those words when you look at the Hebrew roots of what God is stating um, and the importance of them. So, so we're going to talk about that today. Again, I believe the words God commanded his priest to say over the children of Israel and, you know, throughout I'll say, you know, these are the words like as they... As uh, we read in the scripture this week in number six, um, th these, this is the blessing that the priest would say over the children of Israel. But I want to make it clear, these are, this is not only the blessing that was said over the children of Israel at that time, but it's said over all of us, right? God and, and, uh, and his priest have said this blessing. It's like we were there like we've, we're there at the foot of the mountain or like we are there any time uh, the high priest would say this blessing over the children of Israel. Um, in uh, Israel today during Pesach and Sukkot, uh, the priests get, uh, go in front of the people and say this blessing um, at the wall. This is a blessing that God continually uh, says over us and has upon us uh, as a banner. So again... The words that God commanded his priests to say over the children of Israel held great importance during biblical times and continue to hold great importance today, especially during, uh, of course, the, the lives we lead and the, the world that we live in. As we think about our lives and the journeys we are collectively and individually on, we all can identify times in which God blessed us, guarded us, and sustained us. Those are key terms that you see throughout the Aaronic Benediction. He blessed us, he, he blesses us, he guards us, and he sustains us. Many times in which we felt his hand upon our lives like it was throughout the parasha this week. God is continually guiding us, leading us, and protecting us, leading us through the crashing waves of this world in our lives, even lifting us up on eagle's wings like you know, we read through the Pesach story, like he has done for his people. God is moving in our lives. It is up to us to notice it, to praise him, to thank him, and to allow those times to build our faith. You know, again, I, I want to go through the Aaronic benediction um, just to, again, take a step back and see the importance of it and remind ourselves the importance of it. That it's not just words, but it's actually an action that God is bringing forth over our lives each and every day. God is moving in our lives. And we need to thank him and to allow those times to build our faith to move even more boldly in the future. So when we think of our past week, was there times we can point to where we experienced some, some or all these things, where we felt him guard us, where he felt uh, him protect us? I, I know there are many times that maybe we go through our, day, our weeks and, and you know, it's a, it's a normal week. Nothing really uh, occurred as it relates to no issues, um, no obstacles we had to get over. But I always, I always try to remind myself, even if there was no obstacles that I saw, we could be assured there's probably millions of obstacles that God moved out of the way so that I or my family or, or whoever didn't have to experience, right? Um, so I think that's very important for us to know because it's not just the things that we see uh, right in front of us or the things that we f specifically uh, experience right in front of us, but it's also those things that... God was like, you know what, I don't, you don't have to go through this. I'll take care of that for you. You can rest, that type of thing. Have we, helped, have we felt the hand of God moving through our life? Have we felt him calm the raging waters around us? Have we felt his power and his peace? 
I believe God is moving strongly with, with, in us uh, individually as well as a community. And I believe that he's moving throughout this nation. And I believe now is a perfect time to review the words of this blessing, understanding the significance of it, and ensuring that we're carrying this banner. And I'm going to repeat this. I want to make sure that when we go through these words and we talk about the name of God, that it's not just the name, right? It's not just saying the name that it has some magical power. It's not just reading the words and it has some magical power, but it's the action, it's the essence, it's the shekinah behind it is what causes that to have that influence and that protection and that blessing up, uh, upon us. It's that banner that we're supposed to take and walk in, right? When we talk about, uh, when we, uh, the verse that talks about don't use the Lord's name in vain, right? We always say, yes, should we not say the words that are out there that uses the Lord's name in vain? Of course not. We shouldn't say that, right? But that verse about using the Lord's name in vain, it's about your actions, doing something in the name of God and attributing it to him that God did not want that goes against his word or goes against his instruction. That's using. It's the action behind it. And I want to make sure, excuse me, step on this the whole service. I want to make sure that we understand that, that these words, it's the action that it's speaking of. It's what we have all around us each and every day that's taking care of us and that we're walking with to help us have a boldness in our faith, a confidence in our faith, and a confidence to know who we are uh, in the one true God. With that said, uh, the title, uh, like I said, the title for today is Habraka, the blessing, priest, uh, priestly blessings, the Berkat Kohanim. You can pick one. To begin, let's read the verses that state the Roman benediction and then break each verse down. Numbers 6, 22 through 27. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. So this blessing that we say each week at the end of service and many of us say throughout the week, this priestly blessing formally takes place twice a year in Israel. So back in, back in biblical times and even today, uh, it's said, it was said during Pesach and Sukkot at the wall. Very widely known blessing and very well repeated blessing for good reason. As we read in these verses, God commanded these words to be said over his people continually during that time in the past and during us today. And we have to ask ourselves, I mean, that's, why would he want the blessing to be said over them continually? Why would he want, you know, when we think about the mezuzahs, we think about the talit, um, we think about all these, these things, these symbols that are done for us. Why is it? Why would God want his priests, his leaders, to be saying this blessing over his people nonstop? It's because we need reminders, right? God knows that out of sight, out of mind with humanity. If we don't hear it, if we don't read it, if we don't see it, we're not thinking about it, right? And that's the point. That's the point of everything that we do here to keep us on top of our heads, to remind us that God's above us. The mezuzahs, the talits, like I said, all of those things are all reminders pointing us towards God, towards his word, and towards his spirit, right? So as the, the priests were stating this, these words, talking about the blessings, talking about his face shining upon them, talking about his graciousness towards us, his countenance being lifted upon us, his peace that he's giving us. When you hear those, it's like it becomes like a charge each and every day, like a motivational speech that you would see on YouTube in today's world, right? It's like a charge, a banner for his people to say, guys, remember, remember what I am doing all around you. Remember what I'm providing you. I'm providing you peace if you just rest in me. I'm raising my face upon you, shining my shkina upon you. That's what you're walking in when you're walking with me, right? That's that charge. You can, you can almost hear um, the priest yelling it out for all to hear. Back in that day, they did not have microphones, right? I mean, obviously, you see it done at the wall today. They got microphones. They got these enormous speakers, everything else going on. Back in the day, they didn't have that, right? 
So you can almost hear the priest shouting this blessing as that charge to his people. As we read in these verses, God commanded the word, these words to be said continually. Before we dive into each verse, though, I want to spend some time on who it is coming from. As we have in the front of the Torah table up here, it is imperative that we da lifne miata omen, that we know who before we stand. And the best way to know, that is to know the name of our God. All the way up until Moses, God revealed himself to his chosen through the name Elohim. Through this name, God was seen as the supreme being, the divine judge, the plurality of majesty. When we revealed himself to Moses, he revealed his true name to Moses and all Israel. And I feel like it's very important to understand uh, his name, because I know a lot of times we say God, but like when you, in knowing his name, because really, if you think about it today, anybody in the world and any religion could use the term God, right? It is a generic term. But when you say Yeshua, when you say, you know, whatever uh, um, the, the, the letters we see up here, however it is supposed to be said, some think Yehovah, some say Yahweh, a variety of different ways, right? But if you say Yehovah, you say Yeshua, people know who you're speaking of, right? They, if you say God, truly, you, you could come in contact with many different religions and they'll say, yeah, I, I pray to God. Well, their God's probably different than the God that we pray to, Right? So I think it's important to understand uh, the names of God uh, and what they communicate. Because again, all these names and all these words, they're not just there uh, just as a label. They're there to be communicating actions uh, in what God's doing for us. So with that said, let's read uh, Exodus chapter 3, 13 through 15, which states, Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Moreover, God said to Moses, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is my memorial to all generations. God revealed himself through the Hebrew name, which literally means, I am that I am, or I be that I will be. As we know in Hebrew, the majority of words have a root word associated with it. The root for Yehovah, or the yud He vav He is He yud He, which means, or Haya, which means to be or become, and goes right along with what we have above my head, like I mentioned. Asher haya vehove veavom. God conveyed his name as he is, he was, and he is to come. He is all encompassing. He is everything for all time. We see this phrase repeated in the book of Revelation four times, specifically at the four and twenty elders circled the room. This is part of what they said in their worship of God. Revelation eleven seventeen states, saying, We give thanks. We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is, the one and who was, and who is to come, because you have taken your great power and reigned. Again, when given this name, God sought to convey that he is that ever was. He is the one true most powerful God, and there is no one nor anything that comes close to him. There are a million words in our lexicon as humans that we could use to describe God and still wouldn't be enough, right? He's, he's, he's the true, I mean, you hear people say this, but he's the true indescribable being, right? So simply put, God is, I am. Understanding this divine being, the most powerful God who is conveying the blessing to his people. So I think it's important to remind ourselves who God is, right? And not just, you know, talk about it, not just say it, but truly dive into all the different facets, attributes of God. Um, and then realizing that this, this God, this, uh, this being from the beginning, the one who created all, the master of all, is the one who not only got off his throne, came on this earth and died for our sins, uh, and, and uh, for all the wayward things we do, um, but he also is this one 
that loves us so much that he is providing his blessings upon us. He's guarding us. He's sustaining us. I think it's always imperative for us to, to remind ourselves that, especially as we go through our daily lives. Understanding this divine being, the most powerful God, who is conveying the blessing to his people, Israel, and to us today, I believe the Israelites back then and us today must take hold of these words and carrying them as a banner on our lives, no matter the situation, people, or climate around us. It is almost like we have to think as though, I mean, because obviously we're not going to walk around with, a, with holding a banner, right? But it's almost like it is we are walking around with this banner throughout our daily lives. And if you pictured yourself doing that, right, uh, with, with these words above you, right, that we take these words, put them on a banner, two posts, walking through the world like this. I mean, talk about a reminder for us, right? And then also you think about how much different we probably would act in, uh, in public if we had that banner above us, right? Confident, bold representing, knowing who we represent and making sure we represent him the right way, right? With that said, let us begin reviewing each verse as a part of the blessing. We say each Shabbat. Number 624 states, The Lord bless you and keep you. Yevarechecha Adonai Vaishmarecha. Literally stated, Who is, who was, and is to come, Bless and keep you. Looking at these Hebrew words in the verse, two words jump out. Of course, the Hebrew, Barak and Shamar. Barak, as uh, we all know, means bless or blessing. A variety of different ways to look at the word is being blessed of God physically, spiritually, being made holy, being made consecrated, bringing happiness, peace, and thankfulness. The other word, Shamar, in Hebrew, means guard, protect, preserve, give charge, over to watch. So he's saying that he's bringing forth, whether it's physically spiritual blessings, or he's bringing forth holiness, he's bringing forth consecration to us, he's bringing forth happiness, peace. And then, he's not only bringing that forth, he's guarding us. Right? God is protecting us. He's preserving us. I mentioned earlier, you know, about uh, when we pray and we're, we're thanking God for the week and thanking God for, you know, taking away, you know, uh, helping us get through the obstacles uh, that we uh, had to go through or get through the situations that arose during the week, but also thanking him for those that we didn't have to experience. He's protecting us from those that we didn't even have to experience. He's giving charge over us. He's watching us. It's a mouthful in those, what, six words, seven words, right? We could stop right there and we should be good to go, right? The fact that he's providing all of this to us in those seven words. So, Shamar again, guard, protect, preserve. This word is most notably used in the command to keep the Shabbat as we read in Exodus 20, verse 8, which states, Remember the Sabbath day to set it apart as holy. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. As God commanded, he seeks for us to guard, keep watch over the Shabbat. He wants to view the Shabbat as, di as different and special. He wants us not to forget it or relegate it as though it's just another day. So when we put all of that, the, these meanings together, as it relates to the first portion of the priestly blessing, this infinite, all-power, all-powerful, know, all knowing, all-everywhere being, that cannot be truly described is conveying to his people that he plans to bless us, bring us peace, make us holy, consecrate us, guard us, keep us, protect us, and watch over us all the days of our lives. The next verse in this blessing is Numbers chapter 6, verse 25, which states, The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Literally stated, who is, who was, and is to come, shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. We see this phrase used elsewhere in the Bible, in Psalm 80, verse 3, which states, Restore us, O God, cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. In this psalm, 
Is that it? In this psalm, the children... Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yep. that's... Sorry. Uh, so in this psalm, we see the chief muse musician is calling out to God, seeking to be restored, and conveying the sense that God shines his face. He illuminates his essence, his presence, upon those individuals, upon his people, seeking to be restored. His shkina, his glory, is shining upon his people that they receive restoration, they receive salvation. Likewise, in Daniel 9, 16 through 17, we see Daniel seeking the same type of help concerning God's sanctuary, which states, O Lord, according to all your righteousness, I pray, let your anger and your fury be turned away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain, because of our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers. Jerusalem and your people are a reproach to all those around us, now, therefore, O oh God, hear the prayer of your servant and his supplications. And for the Lord's sake, cause your face to shine on your sanctuary, which is desolate. So we see here Daniel fervently praying for the restoration of God's temple, raising it out of desolation into God's light. Now, let's look at each Hebrew word in number 625 and how it is defined. First, we read uh, Ya'er, which means shine but comes from the root, root word or, which means light, conveying the hope that God's light shines upon his people and that his people are illuminated through his light, his presence, his shkinah. Well, we, only, we always talk as we go out in this world, you know, let our lights shine, right? You know, really the true way of saying is let God's light shine through us in the world. And then when we think about God's light and what God's light, what his ore uh, represents, then we, you go back and you go down to the, uh, the detail of, well, what does God represent, right? And you go through all the different verses in the Bible and you're understanding what God represents. And so when we're out in this world, whether it's work, grocery store, uh, at the park, whatever it might be, we're seeking to let God's light that he illuminates on us that restores us and brings salvation to us and then we're, we're hopefully seeking to allow that illumination out from us to people that are around about us. The second Hebrew word after the name of God is panav which is translated as face. This word can also mean presence, person, or before or behind. The final Hebrew word in this verse is chanan. This word means gracious. Show mercy, pour favor upon. Again, putting this, ver this whole verse all together, God is seeking to illuminate his people through his light, through his shina, as well as pouring his favor, his mercy upon all of us. The last portion of the uh, Ronic benediction is from Numbers 626, which states, The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Isa Adonai Panava Lecha Vayisem Lecha Shalom. God is seeking to raise his face upon his people and give him peace. We see this phrase used several times uh, throughout Scripture. And first we read it in Psalm 43, verse 5, which states, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Put my name on the Israelites and bless them. In this verse, we see that the term panav is being used as salvation. That through the hope in God, his countenance, his face will shine upon his people and bring restoration, bring salvation to them. Two other places uh, the term countenance is used in Scripture is in the New Testament, and it provides a description of how the followers of God saw his countenance. Matthew 28, verse 3, and Revelation 1, 16 state, his countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. He had in his right hand seven stars, out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. Now let's look at six, uh, number 626 to get a better understanding of what he's trying to convey. Similarly, in verse 25, when Panav was used and how we just saw in a variety of verses, when God raises his face or his countenance, it's this blinding light. It's this illumination. 
when he raises his countenance and places it on his people. So as you go through, you know, when you think about yourselves individually, when you think about uh, yourself with your family or, or uh, us as a community and you're going out into the world, think about this illumination that is around us. I know there's been many times that the rabbis have uh, brought up um, uh, scenario, situations, stories, how you know people saw the light on others. I know recently about you know that one of the churches was on fire, right? That people walking are seeing this illumination from people of God worshiping God, right? And we have that illumination all around us. We have that illumination upon us. That is our banner, that illumination. That is what we're walking with each and every day. So I, I think that's an important reminder to ourselves that when we wake up and we say, Modeani, and we, we take on the day, you know, do we roll out of bed remembering that light we have upon us? Remembering that light that it's really not only remembering the light that we have upon us and what, what stands behind that light, but also remembering... Um, that it's our duty to share that light, you know? Verse 26 ends with God seeking to bring peace to his people. When we look at that term for peace, we all know his shalom. Shalom can mean peace, welfare, but also can mean completeness, conveying the notion that only way for peace is through the completeness in God. The only way that any of us will have complete peace, complete shalom in our lives, no matter what uh, tornado is going on around about us, is being complete and full with God. Not wanting, right? Not seeking or wanting anything else other than God's presence. Following the understanding that we are only complete or perfect when we are with God, so through the priestly blessing God commanded to be said over his people many times throughout their lives, God, the who is, the who was, and the who is to come, was placing a banner and a charge on his people, on us today, so that they would know and never forget, no matter where they are, what situation they find themselves in, that God wants to bring physical, spiritual blessings upon them while guarding and protecting them. He wants to cause his shkina to illuminate their, our lives while pouring out favor and peace upon us. I believe this is extremely important for us today, and we must not only take these words to heart, not only repeat them and say them so we remember them, but also use them as a rallying cry. Use them as a charge for our lives. I know that in today's world, there's, there's tons of, I, I alluded to earlier about like motivational speeches on um, on YouTube and, and others that talk about, you know, going in front of a mirror and, you know, uh, saying different encouraging uh, phrases to yourself uh, to motivate yourself or to, to help you get past situations. I mean, clearly that's all self-help stuff, right? You know, this is our rallying cry for every situation. This is our charge for every situation. Whether it's small, big, whatever it might be, whatever we're going through, this is the charge uh, that we should be saying to ourselves. No matter the situation, no matter the waves around us, not the noise we are, uh, we hear, or destruction we see, we have this all everything God that is surrounding us on every side, taking care of all needs we may have, whether we are worthy of it or not. And that's, that's the thing that's very difficult to understand, right? Is whether worthy of it or not. And clearly, uh, many times not. But this all-powerful God shows this unconditional love to us and still provides all of this to us. For we are part of Israel and God's royal priesthood, as stated in 1 Peter 2, 5, and 9 through 10, which states, You also, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Yeshua the Messiah. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who are called out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people but are now the people of God, 
who had obtained who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy as god called us out of darkness into his presence and continually calls us i i i feel like that's a continual clearly there was one main call out of darkness when we came in salvation but then it's a continual stay away from that darkness and stay in my light that he placed his banner upon us as his royal priesthood and with the banner we receive this blessing upon our lives now number six ends and it's interesting when you think about these verses in the in the three verses that we've read so far and we're about to read the fourth that that isn't typically a part of the ironic benediction um, it's really just the first three that we uh, just went over but it, it's really you could see and and many uh, rabbis have said this uh, uh, in the past as well as scholars that when the priest would say this it would it would be rising in passion like every, all four verses you know the the priest would get more passionate and more and more loud as they're saying it to all the people with ending with this numbers uh, 626 so in number six ends with one more verse and it's number 627 which states so they shall put my name on the children of israel and i will bless them it's the most important one of them all that after all this blessing he goes that i will put my name upon the people of israel upon my people the hebrew word for name is shem and can be defined as name or reputation the greek word for the name is anoma and can be defined as a proper name or similar to reputation the name is used for everything which the name covers everything the thought or feeling of which is aroused in the mind by mentioning hearing remembering the name one's rank authority interest pleasure command excellences deeds in addition you know uh, as i was looking at this I, I found three verses that many of us have heard in the past uh, some proverbs some the, not necessarily uh, spir uh, uh, biblical or, or scriptural um but just proverbs that you see out there good men must die but death cannot kill their names tigers die and leave their skins people die and leave their names because what does that name stand for right not just uh, the name itself but what was behind that name so when we say Yehovah or Yeshua or wh whatever else should I whatever name of God what is behind that name what do those names represent and then when you think about that name being placed upon us and what those names represent I, I, I it's pretty, uh, to me, it's pretty powerful, right? To, and it's a reminder I need to tell myself every, every, probably every second of the day, but every day, right? Is that this is the banner you're carrying in this world. This is the light that you're illuminating in this world. This is the name that has been placed upon you in this world. You know, and this is a talk to myself. What are you doing with all of that? right? What, how, are you sharing it? Are you allowing the illumination to come forth? Are you allowing the attributes of that name or that power of that name or the essence of that name or the shkina of that name to come forth to those around you, whether it's family, children, wife, or friends or family or, or co-workers, whatever. There's a lot that's in that banner that we see up there that we carry with us every day. There's a lot in that banner, not just words. I believe the definitions we reviewed in these sayings highlight the importance of a name, that it's not just a label or someone to call you, but that it should be viewed as a banner or a charge of who you are, a verb in a sense of who you are, a walking, living, breathing description. To put in Hebrew, so the term put, when it talks about uh, God will put his name uh, on us, the term to put in Hebrew is the term sum. And this term can be, mean place, establish, appoint, or ordain. So after stating all these things, God wants for his people. He wraps it up by saying, through these blessings, through his face shining upon us, through his completeness, he will establish, he will appoint, and ordain his people, Israel, forever. That wherever Israel goes, God will be there. Wherever, where, whether good or bad, God will not forsake his people. He will not forsake us. He will go wherever we are. As we navigate this tumultuous year and the years in front of us and we seemingly tenuous um, situations we find ourselves in, 
We must remember these words. We must keep them close to us. We must always remind, uh, our, remind us, remind ourselves of them, remind those around us about them. Let's not fall victim to that they are just a blessing, we say them during Shabbat and holidays. But let us remind, remember that what God is saying through these words to us. And also, I was, I was thinking about it, and as I was um, studying and preparing um, for this today, and thinking about the importance um, of these words, and, and you know, when you think about back in that day, and I, I mentioned before, you had... Um, you had many different cultures, many different religions that would take names and chant them, you know, and think that they would get some magical uh, blessing out of it if they just chanted the name or chanted phrases like this. That's not what this is, right? When we say these verses, we're not chanting them. We're not seeking some, uh, like, genie in a bottle. Hey, if I, it's like, I was, I used to be Catholic when I was much younger, and I remember when I went to the Catholic Church and I, I uh, told the priest my sins, because uh, I was a kid when I did this, and so I was saying I was bad to my sister and brother and whatever. And they're like, yeah, I'll say three Our Fathers and two Hail Marys. Like, if I say, just repeat those, I'm good to go, right? Like, everything's fine, right? There's no, no talk about changing the action, no talk about walking out uh, the, the words of Scripture. Just, hey, go say these. I mean, it's the same thing as this. I mean, if we go out there and we say Yeshua five times or we say the Rona benediction ten times each day and that's it, well, that's not going to change anything, right? And I think we all know that, but I feel like I want to say that, is that it's when we're saying it, it's because we're taking our minds and we're going past the words. We're going into what all these definitions, that's why you know, it, it might have been um, mundane, might have been... You know, um, Hopefully not too boring, but you know, going through each of these words and reminding ourselves what the Hebrew words uh, mean and what they're truly trying to communicate. Hopefully, that's what we're thinking about when we we say uh, the uh, Rona benediction, and then after thinking about it and knowing what it says and knowing what's on us, we go walk it out. Right? We go walk and shine the light that God placed upon us. I also found it interesting when reading this parasha that in number six, um, as, as I studied, there was nothing out there that really identified um, a, a true connection to this. So maybe, um, maybe it was just placed there just to be placed there as a part of an end of a, um, a, you know, a, a speech or something like that. Uh, but in number six, you know, the first three quarters of number six was around the Nazarite vow. And not getting into the Nazarite vow and like everybody should do or whatever, but um, the piece of the Nazarite vow uh, that I thought was interesting in connection to the Aaronic benediction was the separateness, right? When uh, individuals who took a Nazarite vow and went through it, they were separating themselves for God, right? They were separating themselves from everybody else uh, in seeking holiness, consecration, restoration, a variety of things from God, right? So I think that theme itself can be applied to these verses. That when we are looking at the Aaronic benediction, God is taking his people, we already read the verse about the royal priesthood, chosen generation, he's taking this people that he's separated out from the world, right? And he's placing his name on that separate people. And I think that's very key for us uh, in this world today, that that is what he's called us to be. He's called us to be unique. He's called a, you know, we, we don't just get all the blessings, but we have to walk in that, right? We have to walk in that uniqueness, walk in that uh, chosenness, walk in that um, blessing that he's poured upon us. So with all that said, uh, let's end with, uh, let's remember the words of Revelation 1, 4 through 8, which states, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Yeshua the Messiah, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. All the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. 
I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. As we continually are looking up to the clouds, waiting for Yeshua to come back, uh, as, and as we are walking through this earth with the banner on us, let us continue to strive to be that faithful church. As we go through whatever situations come by, whether God uh, takes them away before we see them or that he wants us to go through for um, reasons uh, he knows, uh, let us continue to strive to be this faithful church uh, that we read in Revelation 3, 7 through 13, which states, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you because you have kept my command to preserve. I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from God, and I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So as we go out, and it talks about it kept my command. It is our charge to guard his commands, to guard his instructions, to guard that banner, that charge that he's placed upon us, to guard that name that he's placed upon us as he comes. Amen. It is our duty to praise the master of all, to ascribe greatness to the author of creation. For he made us unlike the nations of the lands and has not placed us like the families of the earth. He has not made our portion like theirs and our lot like all their multitudes. And we bend the knee and bow and acknowledge our thanks before the king over kings, the holy one, blessed be he. He stretches out heaven and establishes earth's foundation and the seat of his glory is in the heavens above and the presence of his power is in the most exalted heights. He is our God, there is none other. True is our King, there is nothing beside him. As it is written in his Torah, and you shall know this day, and take to your heart that the Lord, he is God, in the heavens above and on the earth below, there is none other. Amen. Amen. May you stand. It was an awesome teaching. Um, the Yishmarecha, we say that in the Moroni benediction, we, Brian talked about. The root word of the Yishmarecha is shamar, sh shomer, to guard, to keep. He will guard you. He will keep you. That comment, that blessing um, requires trust that he guards us and keeps us. And trust is a feeling. The feeling of trust is one of I have no worries. The feeling of trust is one of, I'm not worried about anything. Why? Because the one I trust is dependable. I depend on him and he comes through. I don't have to worry about the things around me. Why? Because he keeps you. He guards you. That's probably the, one of the most beautiful parts of that blessing. And when we wake in the morning and when we have Shabbat and we are Shomer Shabbos, we're keeping the, we're guarding the Shabbat, like Brian said, we're guarding his commands. Shomer Mitzvot, or Shomer Torah. We're guarding that. God, in turn, wants to trust us. He wants us to be dependable in that guarding and that's the beautiful part of this message when God was talking to Job he asked Job he, he was reprimanding him and he says are you in the field when the calves have their have their young are you in the field the calf 
squats, out comes the out comes the baby, the baby grows and gets strong, and the mother walks on. I control it all. Do you make thunderings? Do you make lightnings? Can you control Leviathan? Can you do, do you do, do you stop the tongue from the from the dragon? No, I control all things. And here you are upset and mad and angry at me, causing, telling me certain things. The reality is, you must trust me. And Job's response pretty quickly was, you're right, I'm nothing. I'm a worm, I'm a maggot, I, I, uh, I have to trust you. You're right, I can't control these things. And what do I have to do? I have to know that the Yishmerecha, that you keep me. I trust it. It's a feeling of no worries. And that's the beautiful thing of this blessing. And we forget it, but Birkat Kohanim, which is what comes from this parsha, is uh, it's a beautiful thing when you can not worry because God is in control. He's the boss. And what a beautiful place to be. So, I mean, good teaching, Brian. It was great. sins of men and you let out a cry crucify now alive in me and these hands of yours teach them so as you please how to reach out Desperate to see all the greatness of God, may my soul rest assured in you. I will never be the same. No, I'll never be the same. Cause I know that you're alive, you came to fix my broken life, and I seem to glorify your holy name, Yeshua.
your faithfulness is true. And when death is full of presence, all we need is you. So waiting here for you, with our hands. sing hallelujah we worship you today there's none like you in heaven and earth you established the foundations of the earth and you've spanned the corners of the heavens we stand in awe of you and here we are we do wait for you we trust in you we're guarded by you protected by your hand we honor you, Shua HaMashiach, King of Kings. We know you're returning, you're coming again. And that time is short. We ask, Lord God, that you will continue to lead us and guide us by our hand as you protect us and guard us from the enemy. We bless you and we praise you. There's none like you. Hashem Yeshua HaMashiach. Congregation says, Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you, to lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Shalom, shalom, Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Even come quickly, Lord Yeshua. Amen and amen. Shavua Tov. You see, it's just for a couple announcements. Um, really, it's just one. Is we do have yeshiva this Wednesday, uh, 7.30 to 9. Um, again, we're going through the history of Israel. So if you'd like to join us uh, and if you haven't been there, you can come anytime. Um, so uh, we're going through about uh, uh, a couple hundred CE to 1500 CE. Uh, and we're going to be discussing a, a, a Christianity at that time because last week we talked about the, uh, Israel and Judaism during that time. Now we're going to look at other um, religions and cultures at that time. So I encourage you to come uh, again, 7:30 to 9. And with that, just a reminder: is the Dakar box and backs for tithes, offerings, donations. One side here to the left is your uh, praise reports and your prayer request. As we go into Oneg, let's say the bracha together. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lecha min haaretz b'Hashem Yeshua Hamashiach. Amen. Shavuot Tov.